Good morning and happy Monday for those of you who are watching this live. And yes, it is Monday. I know it's easy to lose track of what day it is right now. Um, for a lot of us, every day may feel the same, but at least um, when you have a yoga schedule to look forward to, you can kind of know what day of the week it is to put, so that you know what class is going on, right? And this morning, it is Gentle Flow. My name is Melissa, this is Shangri La Hot Yoga, and Gentle Flow, I always like to explain it before, but it's pretty self-explanatory with the name, it's gonna be slow, you know, we're still gonna move a little bit and get our heart rate going, but it's gonna be a little bit slower than our normal vinyasa classes, um, really great if you're an advanced yogi who just wants to stretch it out, take it a little bit slower, or great if you're a newer yogi who, you know, isn't totally comfortable with those faster paced classes yet and want to get used to all of the different poses and movements. Um, I will be offering modified chaturangas, um, probably um, a very modified chaturanga today. So if you have a more advanced version in your practice, I welcome you to take that. And we're going to be working on a lot of hip openers today, so making sure that you listen to your body, do what feels right for you, and we'll get started in our child's pose. So whatever that means for you, child's pose can be knees out wide, it can be knees together. So it doesn't necessarily have to have your knees all the way out at, at mat with apart. So just deciding what feels good in your body this morning, knees together, knees out wide, big toes touch wherever you are, and allow the hips to settle back towards the heel. So it's a nice little hip opener here in our child's pose. Also a nice quad stretch as well, stretching out the front side of our, our thighs. You're gonna reach long with the fingertips, maybe allow the forehead to come down to the mat and shake the head back and forth, rocking side to side, finding a little bit of movement here. We have the option to start with a shoulder stretch as well if you would like to. So if your shoulders are feeling tight and you want to stretch them out, you bring the hands into a prayer and then bend the elbows and place the thumbs to the nape of the neck. So that's just stretching out through our shoulders, pressing the shoulders down towards the ground. So maybe you're there, maybe you're out with the hands long. So just settling into your practice, into your mat. Feeling your soft breaths. Not really controlling anything yet, just our natural breath coming in and out of the body. I'm just starting by scanning the body. So beginning at the toes, making your way up the legs, to the thighs and the hips. How is your lower body feeling? What does it need from your practice? And then from your hips, going up the spine, to the core, then going all the way up to the shoulders and down the arms to the fingertips. And then from there, we're going up the neck to the face. Try to release some muscles in the face. So unfurl your brows. Take a soft part to your lips to relax the jaw. We're gonna try to relax as many muscles as we can here. And then settling into some sort of stillness in your child's pose. Softly breathing in and out. And then with, we'll start, I like to start my practices with some cleansing breaths just to help us be more present on our mat, let go of everything from outside of this space. And we'll start with a deep breath in through the nose, fill up the belly, then the chest, pause a little bit at the top. Exhale, open the mouth, hear it out. Even bigger breath in. Let it go. Full inhale. Big exhale. Two more times. Inhale here. Exhale it out. Last cleansing breath in. Hold that breath at the top. Take one more little sip of air in. Open the mouth, side out. And sink a little bit deeper into your child's pose. You can find a natural breath or maybe your ujjayi if it's part of your practice. Closing the lips and breathing in and out through the nose. Lift the head up slightly 
And we're going to walk the hands over towards the right side of the mat, coming into a little side body stretch. You can have both the fingertips reaching out long. If it feels good, you can take the right hand and reach back for the leg. So just depending on how you're feeling, but making sure you're pressing the left hip back towards the heel. And then settle the forehead back down towards the ground. Reaching out a little bit longer. You should feel a nice stretch here through the left side body. And then lifting up, coming through center. And then walking it over to the left this time. So opposite side, finding what feels good for you. Maybe reaching out long, hand shoulder width apart, or placing the left hand back towards the leg. Relaxing the head down, pressing that right hip back towards the heel. So we're still finding that nice, even child's pose with our hips. And then maybe reaching a little bit more through the right fingertips, trying to stretch through the right side body. And then we'll lift up slightly. We'll walk ourselves back into center. Reaching out long, settling down for one more breath. With a nice breath, then come up to a tabletop. And maybe your knees need a second just to shake it out. I don't mind do, they get a little bit sore after being in child's pose for a while. So just take some movements if you need to, just to let it go. And then we'll meet in our stable table. Pressing down through the hands, finding strength in your shoulders. Pull the navel in towards the spine. Remember that you want to try to broaden through the shoulder blades. So it's not that we're rounding the whole spine, but we're just strengthening the shoulders and you're pressing the back of the heart up towards the ceiling. But you're still keeping that lower body nice and even. Inhale, lower the belly, lift the chest. Pause right here. So we're just going to pause and feel this nice stretch in the spine. Try to roll the shoulders back and then lift the gaze up towards the ceiling. Press the tailbone towards the ceiling as you lower that belly towards the ground. Good. From here, exhale, press away from the ground, start to round the spine. And then once again, pause. You can hang the head heavy and then start to sway the head back and forth, feeling a stretch in your neck. Try to press away a little bit more, pull the belly button in, so we're nicely rounding up towards the ceiling. Once again, stretching the spine, feeling space between each, each vertebra. Inhale to cap. Exhale, cat. And then I want you to take a couple more rounds here at your own pace of your cat cap. So just feeling out those movements. Maybe you want to pause again in one or the other and take some extra movements. You can just take little movements in the spine. Just anything that feels good doesn't have to be cat-cow. So just kind of noticing how you're feeling, what you're needing in the beginning of your practice. to neutral. I'm just going to stretch out the wrists a little bit. So point the fingertips out towards the outside edges of the mat. Maybe walk the hands towards each other and sway back and forth, one side then the other. Maybe taking some full circles coming forward and back. We use our wrists a lot in yoga, so it's really nice to stretch out before. Sometimes I like to get to a class a little bit early just so I can come early to stretch out my wrists to make sure that they're ready for our chaturangas, for tabletop. And then we'll come back to our stillness and just come back to that regular tabletop. Good, we're gonna root down through our left knee and you're gonna extend the right leg and step the toes to the mat. So toes are down here and then start to press the heel towards the back of the room. So we're finding a nice calf stretch 
And then start to shift forward and back, finding little movements, whatever feels good. You can let the head hang heavy, looking towards that back foot. Pressing the heel down as much as possible, gripping into the fingertips. One more breath. Good, from here. Our toes are gonna get nice and light. We're gonna lift the hip out of the heel up to hip height. Try to roll the pinky toe to face down, flexing the foot and pressing the heel towards the back of the room. And then bend at the knee and start to take some circles. So we're just trying to open up our hip here. Take some circles in one direction and then the switch and go the other way. Good, from here we're gonna lengthen back out through the heel, press it back. And then take the right leg across it over the left. Toes come down to the ground. Press the heel down. And then we're gonna take that left shoulder and we're gonna try to press it towards the left hip. So imagine that you wanna touch the shoulder towards the hip. And then look back towards the hip or the heel if that feels good for you as well. Coming a little bit deeper into the stretch. So you should feel this in the side body. You should feel this in the outer hip as well. And then use your breath. So every breath out, maybe press that shoulder a little bit closer towards the hip. All right, so from here, I'm gonna come to facing you guys so that you can see me a little bit better because it's gonna be a little bit of a funky transition. So our legs are crossed. You're gonna take that back leg. So you're gonna take that right knee and you're gonna lower it down to the mat. So right knee comes down, untuck your toes, and then start to walk yourself back towards the hips. If this is too much to have both legs crossed, you're more than welcome to take the right leg forward, right? So either both legs are crossed, the, hip, the heel's next to the hip, or you extend that leg forward if that's a little bit too much, right? Good, so we're gonna take that left hand, we're gonna place it behind us. Inhale, right hand reaches high. Exhale, cross arm over the leg, come into a twist. Gaze is over towards the side and down. Use your breath in to lengthen up, and then your breath out to come a little bit deeper. And I really like this twist because not only are we twisting, but we're also getting a stretch into that IT band, into that outer hip as well. Every breath out, fold the navel in towards the spine, just a little bit deeper. Last full breath. Good, come back to center. Wherever you are, uncross the legs. And we're just gonna make our way forward back into our tabletop. So however you wanna get there, back to your tabletop. Inhale, lower the belly, open the chest. Exhale, round the spine. We're gonna do it one more time. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Come back to your neutral spine. This time, weight into the right knee. And extend that left leg back, toes tucked, and press the heel towards the mat. Once again, pause in here. So if you need to, you can come forward and backwards, finding little movements. You should feel this really nice stretch in the calf muscle, maybe all the way up to the hamstring. Allow the head to hang heavy, stretching through the neck. After all the stretching, you're probably going to feel nice and open when we get to our first downward facing dog, hopefully. One more breath. Good, toes get light. Inhale, lift that leg up. Press the toes towards the ground, press the heel towards the back. Roll the toes to point the mat. And then start to bend at the knee and find those circles. A couple times in one direction, and then switching and going the other way. Leg comes back out long, big breath in. And then a breath out, cross the toes over that right leg, toes come down. Maybe you can see a little bit better, you have a different angle on this side of me. And then start to press the shoulder over towards the hip, look back towards the hip or the heel. Keeping strength in our shoulders, right? So you're still pressing away and strengthening your shoulders as you press into that nice stretch. And then using our breath. 
We always use our breath when we're stretching. Shoulder comes a little bit closer to that hip with every breath out. One more full breath. Remember, kind of a funky transition here. So start to lower the left knee down, untuck the toes, and walk yourself back towards the legs. So if this is too tight on the hips, remember, extend through the left leg. All right. Flexing the toes if that leg is extended. This time, right hand comes behind us. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, sweep the arm over the leg. Come into your twist. Hugging it nice and tight towards the body. Making sure we're not dumping down into our bodies here. You want to keep that length for the spine. Reach up through the crown of the head. It's going to help you feel the stretch a lot more. So using that breath in to lengthen up. Breath out to pull the navel in. Twist a little deeper. Couple more breaths right here. You can use that back hand to help you lengthen and lift. Last one. Good, come out of that twist. And then uncross the legs, however you want to, coming back forward into your tabletop. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, broaden the chest. Exhale, curl. Back to that neutral spine. All right, so we found those movements. We held, so this time we're going to go a little bit faster. So we're going to go through those movements, breath to movement. Remember to modify if you need to. I just listen carefully here. Placing the weight into our left leg. Inhale, extend the right leg out, toes down. Exhale, press the heel back, stretch. Inhale, lift the heel up to hip height. Exhale, bend the knee and start to find some circles. You have a full breath here. Good, inhale, extend back out. Exhale, cross it over. Press the shoulder over towards the hip. Good, big breath in here. And then with your breath out, place the right knee down and start to walk the hands back towards the hip. So find your variation here if you need to extend the leg. Good, big breath in, right hand high. Breath out, cross it over, find your twist. We'll pause for one breath. Good, come back to center. Uncross those legs, walk it forward to tabletop. Inhale, open up. Exhale, round. Inhale, broaden. Exhale, curl. Good, inhale, neutral spine. Pause here, rooting down through the right knee this time. Breath and extend the leg, toes down. Breath out, press the heel back, stretch through the calf. Inhale, hip comes up to hip height. Exhale, bend the knee, circle. One breath. Inhale, reach out long. Exhale, toes cross over, press the shoulder towards the hip. Here with our inhale. Exhale, knee comes down. Start to walk yourself back. You're going to extend through the leg. Inhale, left hand up. Exhale, twist. Here with our inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper. Come back to center. Uncross the legs. Find yourself forward into your tabletop. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more time, inhale, exhale. Inhale, neutral spine. We're going to tuck our toes here, moving on. So tucking the toes, maybe walk the hands forward a little bit. Big breath in. Breath out, lift the hips high, downward facing dog. First down dog, we're working on a lot of stretching, so I know I feel a little bit more open than I usually do in my down facing dog. So maybe you do too. So we opened up a bit through the backside, the legs and the hips. Feel a little bit of shoulder opening as well. But still, walk it out. Find movements. Shake the head, yes and no. I always encourage movement in every pose. You never have to be completely still. And then find some stillness here in your down dog. Spreading out nice and wide with the fingertips. Pressing through those fingers. Maybe the knuckles kind of lift. 
Shoulder blades spread out nice and wide. Pull the ribs in towards each other. Keep a soft bend in your knees here. So knees do not have to be completely straight. One more breath. Inhale, bend the knees, look to the top of the mat. Exhale, walk yourself forward towards your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands meet shins or thighs. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. One more time. Inhale, half lift. Reach through the crown of the head. Exhale, melt down to the ground. Pausing here. Feet are at hips of the part, at least at first here. So walk them out a little bit more. Bend the knees till the belly hits the thighs. Grab opposite elbows and start to sway back and forth. I love ragdoll. I love incorporating ragdoll into my classes because it's a really nice release for the low back. I know I get some low back pain, especially at the end of the day. And I always like to take a ragdoll because it helps just to release all that pressure that, you know, gravity puts on your spine. Good. From here, release the hands all the way down. Tuck the chin in towards the chest. Keep a soft bend in your knees. Inhale, slowly round the spine up to standing. Feeling every little movement here. Head comes up last. Good, meeting in our mountain pose. Roll the shoulders back and together. Palms face forward. Press the fingertips down towards the ground. So open up that chest a little bit more. Find that activity. So we're not lazy here in our mountain pose. We're still staying nice and active. Inhale, reach the hands all the way up towards the ceiling. Exhale, right hand's going to come down towards the right thigh. Come into a little side body stretch. Pausing for a full breath, lengthening up with the inhale. Coming a little bit deeper with the exhale. Inhale to center. Exhale, left hand down. Full breath in. Breath out, find your edge. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, forward fold. A little bend in the knees as you fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. All right, bending the knees so you can plant the palms. Inhale, step it back, but lower the knees down to tabletop. So our modified chaturanga is here, and we cat counts. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. So anytime that we come to these cat cows, if you would rather take a chaturanga, you're more than welcome. Breath in, come back to that neutral, stable table. Tuck the toes. Breath out, lift the hips down, we're facing down. We're going to move through that a little bit quicker. Get our heart rate going just a little bit. Inhale, bend, look forward. Exhale, find your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Two more. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, melt. Inhale. Exhale. Rooting down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, right hand comes down to thigh. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, left hand. Inhale, center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the palms. Inhale, step it back. Knees down, tabletop. Inhale, open up the chest. Exhale, round the spine. Breath in. Breath out. Neutral spine. Tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a second, deep breath in. Open up, clear it out. One more time, full inhale. Exhale, release. All right, from our downward facing dog, inhale, right leg reaches up, three leg dog, flex the foot, point the toes down. Stay right here, start to bend at the knee, open up the hips to the side. Notice that shoulder tries to open up as well. 
try to press the shoulder back down towards the ground, right? So shoulders are pointing down, only that hip is opening up. Maybe you find some movement here if you want to. Shake it up. Good breath in, reach back out long with that leg. Breath out, pull the knee in, rounding the spine as you come forward and gently stepping that foot forward. If you can't quite get it all the way, you can use the hand to pull it to the top of the mat. Lower the back knee down. You can untuck the toes here. We're gonna root down through that foot and then just walk the hands up towards the thigh. Take a second to settle into that front thigh, take a couple of breaths. This is gonna help us find our stability before we come all the way up to that low crescent. Taking little micro movements in and out. Every time you press into that lunge, maybe you feel a little bit more of a stretch into that back hip flexor. One more breath. Good, settle in. Inhale, reach the hands up to low crescent. Pausing right here, pulling that right hip back and that left hip forward, squeezing the thighs together, squeezing the glutes to find that stability, all right? Reaching up through the fingertips, maybe spiral the pinky fingers in, finding active arms. Full breath in. And then with your breath out, you're going to take that right hand, you're going to bring it over towards the right hip, and then you're going to extend towards the side with the fingertips. This might feel a little bit wobbly, but it does keep the gaze at the ground. Gaze at the ground is going to make you feel more stable. If you have a block and you feel like you want to come a little bit deeper, you can always place the hand to a block instead of the hip. That also can help you find some stability because, you know, you have that ground underneath you. So just finding your own variation here. Notice that that knee tries to come out, pull it in, all right? Nice side body stretch here, stretching through the hips as well. One more breath. Good hand gets light. Inhale, reach up high. Exhale, hands come down to the inside of the foot. Walk the foot to the outside of the mat. So finding our lizard lunge here. We're only here for a moment. Come out onto the outer edge of the foot, pressing that knee to the out of, to up the to the outside. Pressing down through the fingers, rounding the spine. Two more breaths. Last one. Good, place that foot back down. Tuck the back toes and lift the back knee up. So we're finding our active lunge here. You can walk that toes in if you need to a little bit. And then gaze comes forward. We're gonna take the left foot to the outside of the left fingers and then hands to heart, a little half squat. So we're not coming all the way down into our malasana yet, right? Just a little half squat here. Sitting down nice and deep. Weight is into the heels, out of the toes. So this is kind of like a wide leg chair almost, right? So keep that chest lifted. Pull the navel in. Nice, strong core. Sit a little bit deeper. Big breath in. Breath out, settle. Last one. Good. Inhale, rise. Step the feet together. Exhale, right knee comes down to the thigh. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, left. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back, knees come down, tabletop. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Big breath in. Breath out. Inhale, neutral spine. Tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, ready for our second side. Inhale, left leg comes up. Point the toes down. Flex in the foot. Stay here if it feels good. Bend at the knee. Open up the hips. Keeping that left shoulder pointed down. So notice if you're opening up through the shoulder. Maybe find little circles, a little bit of movement. Then coming back to center, inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, knee comes in, round the spine. Step that foot forward. Wiggle block it a little bit further forward. And then lower the back knee down. And notice if that knee is tempted to come in front of the ankle. If it is, walk that foot up. And then hands come up to the thigh. So this is step one of finding our stability here. Coming in and out of the thigh. Keeping the belly button in, nice strong core. So we just want to prepare ourselves to come up into our full low crescent where we don't quite have that stability of pressing the hands into the thigh. 
Coming a little bit deeper. Every breath out. One more here. Settle in. Good. Inhale, reach up. Good. All right. So we're going to try to pull that left hip back, that right hip forward on this side. It's going to come in handy when we come into that side bend. That's going to help us feel more stable. I'm going to make sure that I have a block over on my other side in case I want it for later. Reaching up through the fingertips, lengthening high. Deep breath in. Breath out. Left hand comes to either the hip if you don't have a prop here, keeping the gaze on the ground for stability, or you can place it down to the block. Reaching over with the right fingertips. Continuing to hug that left hip crease back. Right, so we're not letting the hips come open here. We're still keeping those hips nice and stable, squeezing the glutes, reaching up and over, lengthening through our side body. Last full breath. Hand gets light, inhale, lift up. Exhale, hands come down inside of the foot. Foot comes to the outside, hands to the inside. You can stay right here, you can open up them to the outer edge of the foot. And just three full breaths. If you're opening up, flexing the toes towards the shin, keeping a nice strong ankle. Foot comes back down. Tuck your back toes and lift your back knee. So find your active lizard lunge. Looking forward, you kind of know where we're going on this side. Take the right foot to the outside of the right hand. And then hands come up, that little half squat or a wide leg chair. Sink it low, a little bit deeper. And we're gonna find movement this time. So inhale, reach up, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, sink back down. Inhale, extend. Exhale, squat. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Good, this time inhale, reach up high, walk the feet in. Exhale, right hand comes down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the palms. Come back to your tabletop. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more time through. Breath in, neutral, stable table. Tuck the toes. Breath out, lift the hips downward dog. All right, so we're coming towards just the, the hardest part of our practice, and that's just our breath to movement, because we come a little bit faster in our breath to movement, right? And then after breath to movement, we'll take a quick break. So give this everything you have, and you're probably going to sweat a little bit with our breath to movement. The whole point is for it to be kind of our cardio portion of our practice. We want to get that heart rate going, because it's really healthy, you know, to work our heart a little bit. Um, go at your own pace, right? Do what you can, modify where you need to. So from our downward facing dog, and we'll just do it one time on each side. Inhale, right heel up. Exhale, bend the knee, open up the hips. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, bend the knee, step it forward. Knee comes down, skipping the hands to the thigh. Inhale, rise. Exhale, side bend, right hand to hip, reach over. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands come down to the inside. Wiggle, walk it out. One full breath here. Tuck the toes, lift the knee, look forward. Inhale, step the foot to the outside, hands to heart. Exhale, sink a low. Inhale, rise, walk the feet in. Exhale, right hand down. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. One more time at your own pace. Inhale to center. Tuck the toes. Exhale, lift the hips high. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, open the hip. Inhale, three leg dog. Exhale, step it forward. Knee comes down. Inhale, low crescent. 
Exhale, left hand to hip, reach over. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, hands down inside. One breath. Tuck the back toes, lift the knee, look forward. Inhale, step up. Half squat, exhale, sink low. Inhale, high mountain, walk the feet in. Exhale, right hand down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lift. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, stable table. Inhale, open up. Exhale, curl. One more just like that. Full breath in. Breath out. Come back to your neutral spine. Walk the knees in towards each other. Sit the hips back towards the heels. Arms come long beside you, forehead down to your embryo pose. And a couple of breaths here in your embryo pose. If you need to, you can always take a sip of water. If you're sweating a little bit, I know I'm getting a little hot here. You can towel off really quick. And we'll take some cleansing breaths. So deep breath in. Open up, let it go. Full inhale. Side out. Big breath in, cleansing breath out, and then just a few more breaths at your own pace. And just slightly slow down the heart rate and the breath. One more here. And then slowly roll the spine up, meeting into our tabletop. Tuck the toes and lift the hips high to your downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, forward, fold top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, with our hands to heart, we're gonna do just one balance here before we come into a little bit more of a flow to get our hips open. So we're just going to root down through our left foot. So our left foot comes down, spread the toes out wide, hands at heart, right foot comes to ankle, to shin, or to inner thigh. So we're just working that tree pose. If you need to, you can kickstand the toes on the ground for support. Come deeper if it feels good. Press the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot. Try to suction cup here. You can squeeze the glutes. That can help you as well. Hands can stay at heart center, or you can reach up. So I'm just going to face you guys. So you can see a little better. So hands at heart. Or you can reach up and extend the branches if that feels good for you. Remember, suction cup the leg to the, the foot and the foot to the leg. Keep the gaze down if you need more support. Only looking up if you're very stable. It's all right if you kind of sway a little bit. You know, all trees kind of sway in the wind. It's a little windy out right now, so you look outside and get your inspiration. Two more. One more breath. Good, let it go, <laughs> shake it up. And then walk the feet out to mat with the park. Toes out, heels in. Inhale, lift the hands high. Exhale, hands come to heart, start to bend into the knees. This time, we're passing through that half spot, going all the way down from Malasana. If Malasana is really hard for you, grab a block and place it underneath the hips, because that'll add a little bit more support here to your Malasana. And there's no pressure ever to have the heels down. So if you can't have the heels down, if that's a little bit too much for your ankles or your hips, please come be up on the toes. It's all right to have those heels lifted. The most important part is just try to press the elbows into the knees to open up the hips and press the hands together. Keep that heart nice and open. Just a little bit 
deeper here into our hip stretch. You can always close the eyes. You want to bring the awareness inside. Close the eyes, bring the eyes open. If you're on a block or wherever you are, just lift up part way. So lift the hips up, bring that block off to the side. We're going to keep that right foot forward and we're going to step the left foot to the back of the mat. So find your active lizard leg. We've been here once before, right? We're going to hold active just for three full breaths. We're engaging that back thigh, we're lifting it up towards the ceiling, we're pulling that right knee in towards the arm. Press away from the ground, we're here for two. Last big breath in, and breath out, lower the knee down, and untuck the toes. Walk that right foot forward a little bit. If you need a little bit more here, well not for a little bit more, but notice that that knee comes in front of the ankle. You don't want the knee to come in front of the ankle and walk that foot forward. You can also add to the stretch as well, walking it forward, because you're going to have a little bit of a wider stance here. A little more of a hip stretch. And this time we're going to hold a little bit longer than we did the last time. So if you want to come deeper, if you have a prop like a block, and you want to come a little bit deeper, you can bring one forearm down or maybe both. If this is too much, please stay up on the palms. There's never any pressure to come any deeper into a posture than you are. You can always roll open onto the outside edge of the foot if that feels good. Try to reach forward through the crown of the head. I know I feel a really deep stretch here in my hip flexor on the left side. So maybe that you feel that too. If you need a little bit more, you can always try to walk that left leg a little bit further back, finding a more of a wider stance. From here, I'm going to give the option for another variation if you want to. You can walk up onto the palms, keeping that left hand down, and just pressing the right hand into the thigh. So there's just an option here. It's just a gentle twist, a little bit more into the hips. If you feel good at center, stay right there. No need to come to this version of this posture. Last full breath. Good, coming through center. Placing the foot down, tuck the back toes and lift the back knee. And then start to walk yourself over, toes in, heels out for your wide leg forward fold. Breath in, you lift up halfway, lengthen. And then the breath out, come nice and deep into that stretch with the head hang heavy. And you choose how you want to take it here. So in your wide leg forward fold, you can be just here at center. You can always grab the legs and pull yourself down, letting the head hang heavy. So anything that feels good, there's lots of different variations that you can take. Try to bring the weight forward into the toes and out of the heels. So weight's nice and forward, playing around with that balance a little bit. And then from center, lift up halfway. And we're just going to walk our knees, our feet in a little bit if you need to, until you can place the knees down. We're going to come towards our frog pose. You may be uh, familiar with what that is. You can use a prop if you need to, a blanket, anything like that. Um, but it is a pretty deep hip stretch. We're not going to hold it for too long. Um, mine on my mat's pretty sticky, so I'm going to come off of the mat just slightly. But I'm going to face you guys so you can see. So you're gonna spread those knees out as wide as you possibly can, and then flex the feet. So the, the shins are gonna be out from the knees, and then the toes are gonna be pointing out from the feet. 
spread them out as much as you can. If you need to, you can use a prop underneath the hands if you want to come a little bit deeper. So you can stay up here. If this is too much for you already, stay right here. If you want to, you can try to come just a little bit deeper, coming down onto the forearms. Trying to make sure that the shins stay right out of the knees, right? It's kind of a 90 degree angle from knees to shins. And it's gonna feel intense. And maybe after a couple of breaths, you're gonna be cursing my name a little bit. But trust me, it's worth it in the long run. This is a great stretch for your hips. Helps to release tension. You know, we hold a lot of tension in our hips. So it's good to do hip openers. You know, sometimes hip openers too can release some emotion and it's more than okay to show emotion. So if you need to, when you're in a deep hip opener and you feel like crying, I more than encourage it. Three more, deep breath in. Let it out. Full inhale, release, last big breath, breath out, however you need to get out. So you can just splat it forward if you need to, <laughs> if you want to come out gracefully you can. I call it the exit out of that beached whale. And then we're going to come back to our table. So however you need to, just make your way to your tabletop, tuck your toes, and lift the hips to downward facing dog. And just the last little part here of activity before I bring it all the way down. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, find the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, hands to heart. So balance, root down through the right foot. Take that left foot to the ankle, the shin, or all the way up to the inner thigh. So you choose here. If you want to, you can find a different variation than you did on the other side. So maybe you have one side that's not so cooperative. Making sure we're avoiding the knee. Pressing everything into center, right? Hugging it in. Keep the gaze down for the most support. Maybe building the branches if it feels good to you. If not, just keep the hands at heart. Keeping your breath here, pulling the navel in, reaching up through the crown of the head. Find that nice length in your spine. You can have a soft bend in the knee too if that feels better for support. Two more. All right, shake it out, let it go. Feet out wide, toes out, heels in. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, Malasana. We're gonna move this time. We're not gonna sink and hold. Inhale, lift, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, lower. Remember, you don't have to go all the way down if it doesn't feel good. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Lift up halfway. Left foot stays forward, right foot steps back. Active lizard lunge, stay right here. Three big breaths. Hug that knee in, walk the left foot forward maybe. Heels high with the ball of the foot on the right side. Keep the activity in the arms, last breath. Exhale, lower the knee down. Untuck the toes. Try to walk that left foot just a little bit further up on the mat. Stay right here, we've been opening our hips a lot. So if you feel ready, maybe you can grab that block. And maybe bring one or both forearms down. Holding with your breath, maybe coming to the outer edge of the foot. For me, that just helps to release a little bit of pressure on my knee, and I feel like it helps me get a little bit deeper into the stretch. And it's okay to come onto that outer edge as long as you're protecting the ankle by flexing the toes towards the shin. Try to press those hips down, stretching out. You want to come into that other variation, you can come up onto the palms. 
right hand roots and left hand presses onto that left inner thigh. Still sinking those hips down, but keeping strength in the shoulder. So press away and rotate the chest towards the side of the room for that baby twist. Big breath in. With your breath out, come back to center if you took that twist. Foot comes down, tuck the right toes, lift the right knee, and walk yourself over towards the side. You can always bring a block with you if you want some support to your toes and heels out. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. You can stay at center if you want a different stretch. You can walk yourself over towards the right leg, maybe taking the block with you. Little side body stretch, also great stretch down the back side of the leg. We're just taking it out of the hips a little bit before we come into that really deep stretch. I know you're probably like, man, I have to do frog on one more side. Yes. I'm going to do it one more time. But at least we split it up, right? Instead of doing it one time for like 10 breaths, you know, we do it two times for five breaths. If you're on one side, walk it over to the other. And then come back to center. Remember, if you need a block or anything like that, you can use it here. Lift up, start to walk the feet in until you can place the knees down. So frog on our other side here. I'm going to slide the knees out as much as possible. Shins out from the knees, 90 degree angle if you can. Stay up in the palms, or if it feels good, come down towards the forearm. Maybe on a block, maybe all the way down to the ground. Pressing the hips back. So try to slightly press the weight back. You're going to come a little bit deeper into that stretch. It's going to feel a little bit more uncomfortable, but that's because we're getting a nice deep hip stretch here in our frog pose. I used to really, really hate this pose, but the more I practice it, the more I've come to appreciate it. I still definitely feel a little bit uncomfortable in it because it is such an intense stretch, but I have just realized how great it is for my body, for my hips. It's, it's great noticing the differences over time, right? From coming from a time when I was really tight, when I first started my practice and frog was really difficult. And now, you know, I can get a lot deeper to it and I can get a lot closer to the ground. And we can notice that in a lot of poses, right? We can notice our differences, how we've advanced over time, which is a great thing about yoga. Last three. Full breath in, release it out, final big breath, deep exhale, find your way out, so slide it forward, coming into that beached whale, anything that you need, Whew, all right, and we're just going to come off to either side, coming into a seat, that's that for our frog pose, you made it. And from here, we are going to come into a little forward fold, but a wide leg forward fold. So walk those feet out as wide as you possibly can. A little tip here to come a little bit deeper, take the hands behind you and just press the hips forward. So that just helps me come a little bit deeper into the stretch. You can use a block as well if you want to, bring that in front of you. And then just start to slowly walk the hands forward. So the block is handy if your forehead's really far from the ground. You can kind of bring the forehead to a block. Making sure you're protecting your knees here. So if you need to, you can have a slight bend in the knees. They do not have to be completely straight. You can always put something underneath the knees for support as well. And if you went lower, come back up. 
Take the right arm to the inside of that right leg. It does not have to be very far. You can take the left hand to the hip or extend that left arm up, coming into a little side body stretch. Stretching from the hip all the way up to the fingertip, reaching out nice and long. Maybe the gaze comes towards the ceiling. Try to roll the left shoulder back, opening up the chest here. So just notice if your leg you want to collapse down, lift up, lengthen. Come front to center. Left hand down, right hand to hip, or reach it up and extend. Rolling the right shoulder back, hugging the shoulder blades together. Nice broad chest here. Inhale, rise. Take the hands underneath the knees and use them as support to pull the legs in. Woo. I don't know about you, but my hips are really feeling all the stretching right now. Place the feet down. We're going to come all the way down. Reach forward, full breath in. And to a count of five, slowly lower. Five, just a little bit of core work. Four, three, two. Notice we can hold that one just for a second. Hold right here. We're almost there. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Come all the way down. Give me a full body stretch. Just stretch it out. Any other movements that you might need here. Place the feet out wide on the mat. So all the way out to mat width apart, feet come down, and then knees just fall in towards each other. So soles of feet down, knees fall in, and bring both hands to the belly, or one to the belly and one to the arm. Starting to slow it all down. I mean, slowing down the heart rate, the breath, and the mind as we come really close to our final rest. And then pull the knees into the chest. Tee the arms out to the sides. And lower both the knees over to the right for a little supine twist. The left shoulder is rooted down. So if the knees can't come down, you can always place a block or a blanket underneath. More important for the shoulder to be down than the knees. Gaze can come over the left shoulder. Trying to relax everything. No more engagement here. You can find a soft little self-adjustment, just gently pressing down on that left thigh. Knees come back to center. And then lower them over to the left. Same idea, opposite side, shoulder roots, gaze come over the shoulder. Use a prop if you need to, underneath the knees or maybe between. Gently pressing down on the thigh. You just want to get a little bit deeper into that twist, bringing out the spine. I always welcome you to close the eyes at this point and keep them closed until the end of your practice to bring everything back inside. Come back to center and curl into a tight little ball. So wrap the arms around the shins, pull the nose up towards the knees, hug it all into center, curl the spine. We're here for final breath and hold the top. So full breath in, hold, take one more little sip of air. Exhale, open up to your Shavasana, take up space. 
as much space as you need here. If you need another variation of Shavasana, you can always place the soles of feet on the mat with the knees in like we did earlier. That just helps relieve some pressure on the low back if you have low back pain. And then open everything up. Try to let go of every little muscle. So get out any of those last minute wiggles that you can release. And give yourself permission to just be here. To enjoy the rest, the relaxation. And I'll call you back when it's time. Slowly allow your awareness to return to your body. Notice if you benefit from more moments in your Shavasana. You're welcome to stay here as long as you would like. If you're ready to reawaken, start to find movement back into the body. Reach the arms along above you, take a full body stretch. Pull the knees in, roll onto either side for your fetal position. You can use the bicep as a pillow for the head. When you're ready, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Hands at heart, eyes closed, or gaze soft. Release all the air. Take your deepest breath in yet. Clear it all out. Take a moment to show yourself gratitude for taking time out of your day to show up on your mat, for taking time for your practice, and most importantly, for taking time for you. Show gratitude to all those taking this class at the same time in their own homes, sharing their experience, their energy, and I'm grateful that you all decided to join me in your practice. From my heart to each and every one of yours, namaste. As always, thank you so much for joining us with your practice. If we really appreciate you guys supporting us with watching, sharing our page, sharing our videos with all your friends. If you can, we appreciate it. If you could donate, if you enjoy the classes, you've been taking them, and you wanna help support us more, you can make a donation through Venmo or MindBody. We have both those links on our Facebook where you can find them. Thank you so much for joining me and Shangri-La Hot Yoga, and have a wonderful rest of your day.